Uh, rates are at multi-year highs right now. How does that impact your operations? Also, how does that impact demand from your customers? Yeah, so I think there's two things. You know, one, definitely there's a demand for faster payback and, you know, more impact to the bottom line. Uh, the other key thing that we're seeing is people just really focusing on retention in the entire customer lifecycle. You know, there's a lot of businesses that I think had leaky buckets in their retention. They would bring new users in and they would lose them at high rates, but they were able to overwhelm that by financing high levels of acquisition spend. I think now that there's scrutiny on acquisition, it's not growth at all costs, you're going back and you're kind of revisiting that leaky bucket, figuring out how to plug the holes, figuring out how to kind of optimize those retention curves and make sure that when you bring a new customer into your environment, you activate them quickly, you make a good first impression, and then you turn that into a long-lasting relationship. You know, Braze has always been very focused on that full customer lifecycle and optimizing it throughout. And an environment like this, where you take a step back and you go look at the full customer lifecycle, has been really positive for us. All right, so right now you're working on monetizing your AI products, including, including Sage AI. So give us a sense. You try to scale up the business. Of course, I, I would assume you have to spend on data centers, um, things like that. In this higher rate environment, how do you manage that? And then how do you just balance the books for a company like yours that's still, in all fairness, not profitable? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, R&D investment has obviously always been a big part of our operating model. And so a large aspect of this is, is really keeping in mind that our software engineering work and, and the amount of investment that we've put into that over our 12-year lifetime um, is one that's actually been focused on AI and ML investment you know, basically the whole time. And so we're continuing a lot of that investment from an infrastructure standpoint in looking at the cost of actually running these AI models. You know, those are places where uh, we've got kind of two aspects of the cost. The first one is the fixed cost that goes into designing campaigns. And, you know, we have uh, our journeys are called canvases, which go through the entirety of the customer lifecycle. And at that stage, you know, when you're really working through a new idea for a campaign, a new way to engage customers, the imagery around that, you know, those get generated once or a handful of times for variants, and then we send them out billions of times. Right. And so the cost there doesn't matter as much as inference actually in the customer journey. And so the latter is where we would be looking to monetize that independently. Got it. Just for clarity for the audience, your products you use for marketers to, to engage customers. Um, I want to talk to you about your guidance. So you raised your guidance last quarter. Uh, the street adjusted its estimates to your guidance. So before you were, it's still a loss, in all fairness. I want to make it clear to the audience, you're still um, operating at a loss, but yep. your guidance was higher than what the street had you at. What gave you the confidence to raise your guidance? Was it simply AI demand, or is there some other trend out there that we're not hearing about? Because we keep hearing about the software market being under pressure. Yeah, so I think, you know, in addition to just Braze being able, being able to operate or offer rapid time to value, which, as I mentioned, you know, in this rates environment is a big priority, the other big thing is technology consolidation. And I think AI and rates actually both have a role to play in this. We obviously have a lot of CFOs and CIOs that are looking at lowering total cost of ownership. And part of that means taking Taking what in, in many of our customers' uh, software landscape is a siloed approach to communicating with their customers, where they might have four or five different software vendors, depending on whether they're communicating on the web or an email or SMS or WhatsApp, all of which are channels that we offer. Right. We can help consolidate that. The other side of it with AI is that if you're going to really have machine learning drive optimization, you need to have a higher level purview. If you're actually you know, communicating in your software and your data is operating in silos, you can't benefit from having a consolidated perspective.